After that hot gospeler has leveled all but the church sky, I wrote the tale by tallow of a city's death by fire. Under a candle's eye that smoked in tears, I wanted to tell in more than wax of faiths that were snapped like wire. All day I walked abroad among the rubble tales, shocked at each wall that stood on the street like a liar. Loud was the bird-rocked sky, and all the clouds were bales torn open by looting and white in spite of the fire. By the smoking sea, where Christ walked, I asked why should a man wax tears when his wooden world fails? In town, leaves were paper, but the hills were a flock of faiths. To a boy who walked all day, each leaf was a green breath, rebuilding a love I thought was dead as nails, blessing the death and the baptism by fire. Derek Walcott was a St. Lucian poet and playwright who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1992. Walcott's poetry is known for its vivid imagery, its musicality, and its engagement with both personal and political issues. His poetry addresses the legacy of colonialism by exploring its complex impact on Caribbean culture and identity. He delves into themes of displacement, cultural hybridity, and the struggle to reconcile imposed colonial values with indigenous heritage. Walcott's poems reflect the tension between the beauty of the Caribbean landscape and the historical trauma inflicted by colonialism, offering a nuanced perspective on the region's past and present, and thus give a window into the legacy of colonialism more broadly, and the scars left by an oppressive, exploitative system on the world. The end of colonialism defined the dawn of the 20th century, hence starting here with this poem. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer, things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dim tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly those words are out when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi Troubles my sight, somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man. A gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs, while all about it, real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast its hour come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. Widely considered one of the greatest poems of the 20th century, The Second Coming was written in 1919 in the aftermath of World War I, a time of significant social, political, and cultural upheaval. The dark, apocalyptic imagery reflects a sense of disillusionment and fragmentation, capturing the anxiety and uncertainty which characterized a period where Western civilization seemed to be collapsing and a terrifying new age was struggling to be born. However, the poem also expresses hope for rebirth and renewal, symbolized by the circular flight of the falcon and the relentless turning of the gyre Shepherd to yon tall poplars, tune your flute. Let them pierce, keenly, subtly shrill, the slow blue rumor of the hill. Let the grass cry with an anguish of evening gold, and the great sky be mute. Then hearken how the poplar trees unfold, their buds yet close and gummed and blind, in airy leafage of the mind, rustling in silvery whispers, 
the twin-hued scales that fade not nor grow old, poplars and fountains and you cypress spires springing in dark and rusty flame. Seek you aught that hath a name, or say, say, are you all an upward agony of undefined desires? Say, are you happy in the golden march of sunlight all across the day? Or do you watch the uncertain way that leads the withering moon on cloudy stairs over the heaven's wide arch? Is it towards sorrow or towards joy you lift the sharpness of your trembling spears? Or do you seek through the gray tears that blur the sky in the heart of the triumphing blue a deeper, calmer rift? So, I have tuned my music to the trees, and there were voices dim below their shrillness, voices swelling slow in the blue murmur of hills, and a golden cry, and then vast silences. Aldous Huxley was a prominent English writer and philosopher, best known for his novels and essays. But he began as a poet, publishing a compendium of poems called The Burning Wheel in 1916. His contributions to the idea of transhumanism are evident in his exploration of the potential consequences of advanced technologies on human societies and individuals. For instance, in his novel, Brave New World, Huxley presented a dystopian vision of a future where various technologies are used to create a seemingly utopian society, devoid of individuality, critical thinking, and true emotions. While the novel serves as a cautionary tale, warning against the dangers of unchecked technological advancements and the potential dehumanization of society. Huxley's vision of the dawning of a new age, where technology and information improve the human condition, bypass limitations, and topple restrictive old social structures, have had a lasting impact on the discourse surrounding transhumanism, prompting discussions about the ethical, social, and philosophical implications of using technology to enhance biological capabilities. Since the close of the 20th century was not only the dawn of a new millennium, but the start of the information age as well, a poem by Huxley seemed like a solid choice to end with. Plus, we're all about transhumanism here, obviously. <laughs>